Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Chelan County will pay about $1.8 million for a piece of land on Omi Garden Road, which will eventually be the site of new county facilities. The second public hearing regarding the closure of Columbia Elementary School will be held on Thursday. Windy today with breezy conditions expected tomorrow too. Then quiet with seasonal weather through the end of the week. Your local forecast is coming up. Police believe at least one person is dead after a single car accident Sunday morning on Highway 97A, just south of Rocky Reach Dam. According to the Washington State Patrol, a 2013 GMC Sierra was traveling southbound shortly after 9 a.m. when it veered across both lanes over a railroad track and down a steep slope into the Columbia River. It took crews working throughout the day to pull the wrecked pickup to shore. The unidentified driver was presumed dead, but no body has been recovered and authorities are unsure how many occupants were in that pickup. State Patrol Trooper Jeremy Weber spoke with NCW Life News this morning. Uh, and unfortunately, at this point, they were not able to recover um, any occupants that were within the vehicle. So searches will still continue uh, in that respect. But as of right now, uh, it's just an empty vehicle. We don't know why the vehicle went off. We do know through our investigation that the vehicle was traveling southbound on 97 there, that mile post around 203, uh, which would be just south of the dam. Uh, the vehicle went off to the right shoulder, um, opposite side of the river, and then the tire track skid indications would be that the uh, car overcorrected and then went off the roadway that time. So we do know there was somebody behind the vehicle because of that. Um, we don't know, you know, if, it's hard to speculate. You know, there's several reasons why a car could go off the road, but obviously they tried to correct themselves and just overcorrected. Weber says the registered owner of the truck is a local resident, but attempts to contact that person Sunday were unsuccessful. The cause of the accident remains under investigation. The search for a new chief administrator for the Chelan Douglas Health District is narrowing. Chelan County Commissioner Sean Smith serves on the two county health board. He says 31 candidates from across the country have sent in applications to replace Luke Davies, the health district's leader who resigned last month after three years on the job. Board members on a selection committee have already picked their top 10 applicants and must winnow that down to six for interviews to begin later this week. The top three candidates would go forward to final interviews in May. The Health District is the lead public health agency for the Wenatchee Valley. Chelan County will pay about $1.8 million for a piece of land on Omi Garden Road, which will eventually be the site of a new county facility. The 2.75 acres purchase from Eider Properties will eventually be the site for several county departments, including the Motor Pool, the Coroner's Office, and Chelanic County Emergency Management. The county expects to build three buildings on the property, totaling 18,000 square feet, each with office space and vehicle bays. County Board Chair Kevin Overbay says this is a first step in Chelan County's 20-year capital facilities plan, which aims to improve and modernize its properties. Construction could begin this summer. The Wenatchee School Board continues to ask the Wenatchee School District for an alternative option to school closure, that according to President Julie Norton. Throughout the 90-day school closure process, several members of the board and many community members have asked the district to see a budget reduction option that does not include a school closure. During the April 9th board meeting, Superintendent Corey Callahar presented two scenarios, close Columbia Elementary School in 2024-25, or delay the decision a year and consider closure for 2025-26. In an email, Norton said the presentation was consistent with the board's request, although they still asked the district to explore if a third option is available. Due to not recommended items already shared, Norton said, quote, it seems unlikely that there is a reasonable option that would adequately fill the budget shortfall without drastically or detrimentally impacting services throughout the district. District, unquote. 
When we come back, a motorist barely escaped serious injury Friday when a brake component flew off a semi truck on Highway 97 and crashed through his windshield. A 22 year old Afraida man is jailed today after allegedly pulling a gun on a motorist. The second public hearing regarding the closure of Columbia Elementary School will be held on Thursday. And the deaf six and a half year old Shepherd Mix Kodiak has finally been adopted. We'll tell you more. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. The Honda you want is here. So drive in the moment with the versatile CRV or Accord. Both named a car and driver 10 best. And when you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. You've got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, Remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. A motorist barely escaped serious injury Friday when a brake component flew off a semi truck on Highway 97 in Douglas County and crashed through his windshield. The Arondo Fire Department says it happened about 3.30 p.m. just south of BB Bridge. The driver of a pickup was struck when the brake drum of the semi traveling ahead of him broke loose. The driver was treated at the scene and then taken to Lake Chelan Health for further assessment. The Washington State Patrol is investigating. A 22-year-old afraid of man is jailed today after allegedly pulling a gun on a motorist. Grant County Sheriff's deputies say Aiden H. Thompson was the passenger in a Jeep about 8 p.m. Friday traveling on Highway 282 near Road A Northwest. Thompson allegedly admitted to displaying a handgun and pointing it at another motorist who cut the Jeep driver off in traffic and blocked other attempts to pass. No shots were fired and no one was injured. Thompson was arrested after the other driver reported the incident and deputies and afraid of police pulled the Jeep over inside the city. Authorities say he faces a possible charge of first degree assault. The second public hearing regarding the closure of Columbia Elementary School will be held on Thursday. Like the March public hearing, the meeting will be held in the Wenatchee High School Commons from 6 to 9 p.m. unless the last comment is made before then. Public comments will only be accepted in person as remote commenting is not available and speakers must fill out a form prior to speaking. The March hearing brought in a crowd of about 80 people to the Wenatchee High School Commons with a little over 30 people addressing the board. Thursday's hearing will be the last before the decision, which is scheduled to be made on May 14th. Good news to report tonight, Kodiak has finally been adopted. The six and a half year old Shepherd Mix, who was born completely deaf, was featured right here on Paws for Pets a couple of weeks ago. He was recently transferred to the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society from a different shelter where he had lived his entire life. He is quiet, cuddly, and has been patiently waiting for his forever home. The moment finally came on Friday when the Humane Society posted the news of Kodiak's adoption and then shared a photo of him with his new owner. Coming up next, Rob Jammerman will depart in June from his job as Wenatchee's Public Works Director, but he's leaving his mark on the city. We'll have more in tonight's feature story. Expect cooler than normal temperatures tomorrow with seasonal early spring weather on tap through the rest of the week. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. 
from the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Welcome to the newest and funnest fashion boutique on Wooden, featuring mountain chic clothing and men's footwear from Ugg, Brixton, Sorrell, and Free People. Walk on in to the Tiffany Blue Building on the second block of Wooden and check it out. It is nearly impossible to describe what you'll find in Lush Life. It's an eclectic collection of items from around the world. See it for yourself at the corner of Wooden and Emerson. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Rob Jammerman will depart in June from his job as Wenatchee's Public Works Director, but he's leaving his mark on the city. Confluence Parkway, a major new north-south thoroughfare from North Wenatchee Avenue to Old Station, will be one of the works that bears Jammerman's signature. He told NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins that getting nearly $93 million in federal grant money to kickstart the project was one of the highlights of his career at City Hall. Um, major project. Uh, not a typical project that a city the size of Wenatchee or really any city in the state of Washington would take on. And so that has been in the last three years sort of our, our main focus of, of trying to uh, get that off the ground. North Wenatchee is going to look a bit different, but the hope is that it will provide better ease of transportation, uh, more attractive uh, corridors for that whole section of the city. That, that's correct. Yeah, we're, um, we're currently moving ahead to deliver that. We're, we're, I, I think that when everything is said and done, by the time we build the bridge across, across the Wenatchee River, we'll be um, you know, hovering around $200 million. And so we have, we have about $185 million uh, you know, secured, and we're continuing to seek additional funding. But um, we know that that bridge across the Wenatchee River and providing an alternate means just for day-to-day -day traffic, but also in the emergencies that can occur here with wildfires, it's a, it's a very important project. And um, it's one that was, uh, it was at the top of the list for Mayor Kuntz and it's at the top of the list for Mayor uh, Poyer to get those completed. And a stem of that or related to that is the McKittrick project, which is going to allow underpass traffic below the BNSF railways that's between correct. the riverfront and the west side mm -hmm. of town. Right, that's correct. Yeah, that will be, that's in what we call our South Confluence Parkway. So that will be delivered in phase one. And uh, you, if you drive out there today, you can see that we've completed part of it off of Wenatchee Avenue. It'll go underneath the railroad and then we already own the rail, uh, the right of way uh, to the what would be the south of the Diamond Foundry. So that right of way is already there and so that road will go over and connect over to Miller and Holly. It is going to yeah. look a lot different. It is, yeah. Are you uh, sad or nostalgic or wistful that you won't actually be in the position you're in to see all that completed? But you're still going to be a local guy. You'll see it, but it won't necessarily be the same experience. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah, definitely um, this type of project uh, is it's a once in a career type project, but really I, I look to our staff, um, Jake Lewin, our city engineer, and he's really carrying this ball forward. I'm super excited and proud of, of him and what he's doing with that project. Um, and so even though I'm going to be leaving, the, the people that are here are going to, you know, finish that and they're fairly young in their career and it's going to be a really, uh, I think a great thing for them to be part of and just, uh, it, it, like from an engineer's perspective, uh, the the city engineer and the other teams, this to be in a small city like Wenatchee, but to have a project of that magnitude, it's, it's like I said, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for them. So there's a lot of, of excitement amongst the staff to deliver that. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great start to this work week and I hope you had a great weekend too. Boy, our weather was unbelievable over the weekend, wasn't it? Mid 70s Saturday, almost 80 degrees yesterday. Yeah, we topped off unofficially yesterday at 79 degrees. We did see a few more clouds out there today as we check out our weather window from this afternoon. This is our Wenatchee Heights Sky Fi Tower camera. A definite cool down today too 
knew we weren't in the 70s, most of us in the low to mid 60s, and we're going to continue to go down from there as we make our way into Tuesday. Unofficially today, our high temperature in Wenatchee was 63 degrees, so not a bad way to start our work week. Make that 64, a couple of degrees above where we should be for this time of year. 62 is our normal high, our record 77 degrees, and that was set back in 1988. Look at that low this morning, 52, 40 is where we should be for a normal low temperature in our record low just a couple of years ago in 2022, where we bottomed out at 23 degrees. Sunrise this morning at 611, and our sun sets tonight at 751. All right, let's take a look at what we can expect as we get you into our Tuesday temperatures. And I'll tell you what, we are going to cool down. There is a flow of northwest air that's moving down from Canada, and that's going to cool us off compared to what we saw today and especially what we saw over the weekend. 59s for Moses Lake and Afreda, 58 your high in Quincy, 56 for Wenatchee, and then just a little cooler for Antioch. We'll pretty much be in the mid 50s all the way into OMAC with just some cooler temperatures, 54 in Leavenworth for mainly our higher elevations. All right, let's go to that surface loop and we'll show you what we can kind of expect as we make our way through the work, work week. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, still some of those windy conditions right here in central Washington. We'll call it windy tonight. They will decrease a little bit overnight with low temperatures tonight right around that 40 degree mark. Getting into Tuesday, partly cloudy skies. Still going to be a little bit breezy and notice the northwesterly flow of air and that's going to cool us down. We're talking highs tomorrow below normal only in those mid 50s. So it's going to be kind of a cool one for Wednesday. Sunny skies and we will begin to warm up a little bit. High High temperatures right around 60 degrees and look at all of the clear skies throughout Washington midweek Wednesday really the start of a very slow warm up as we get into the upcoming weekend for Thursday sunny skies and seasonal we'll see a bit of a westerly flow on Thursday high temperatures generally in those low 60s which is about normal for this time of year to end our work week on Friday sunny skies we'll call it fair high pressure to our northeast it's going to keep us pretty much clear throughout the uh, Pacific Northwest and up and down the uh, West Coast for Friday. Again, very consistent temperatures with highs about 60 degrees and then a little bit of a warm up just in time for our weekend. Mostly sunny skies, a few clouds in western Washington, a big area of high pressure setting up off the coast of California. High temperatures, low 60s to kick off this upcoming weekend. And then for Sunday, looks like a nice one. Mostly sunny skies. We're going to warm warm up a little bit. Maybe just some of those high clouds out there. That's the gray you see on our map. But look at the temperatures for Sunday. Highs in the mid 60s. All right, let's take a look at your seven day forecast now. And we're going to stay fairly mild uh, throughout our days, but some chilly overnight lows. 39 overnight tonight. 56 is all, which will be below normal tomorrow with those partly cloudy skies. And then a lot of sunshine th Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and very very consistent temperatures right around 60. Our lows pretty much mid to upper 30s, so a little bit cool out there. And then as we get into the upcoming weekend, looks nice. Mostly sunny on both Saturday and Sunday. 63 your high Saturday, 66 on Sunday, and it should be a beautiful upcoming weekend. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Dan Koontz and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues continues right after this. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. So you may have heard the latest trend, shrinkflation. Companies are making products smaller and decreasing the quality of their ingredients. Well, at Abby's, we're going the opposite direction. We're sticking with the same plan that's worked since 1964. For a real value, head to Abby's. This is Skinny, and he helped found Abby's 60 years ago. In honor of Skinny, we're putting his favorite pizza on sale. Savory pizza sauce, Canadian bacon piled to the edge, and juicy tomatoes make this a very special pizza. Order your Skinny special right now at abbeys.com. 
there's no place like home. Because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Well, the Seattle Mariners blew a great chance uh, because Louis Castillo had his best start of the season yesterday. Two crucial grounding into double plays and a base running blunder in the bottom of the ninth. The Cubs beat the Mariners. The final was 3-2. to two. The Mariners have not won a series yet this season. Say a homered last night. He's hitting 300 on the trip, 6 for 20. Say a swings, line drive, base hit in the left center field. This is going to roll all the way to the track. Suzuki on his way to second base gets there standing up. A one out double for Saya and the Cubs. Cody Bellinger at the plate. Castillo looks at second. Little dribbler up along first. That's going to be a tough play. And they throw the ball away. And rounding third alertly and scoring is Seiya Suzuki. Rounded out to third in the first. Swanson waits for the 0 2. Line drive, base hit down the left field line. This will roll all the way to the corner. Swanson cruises into second base with a stand up double to lead off the Cubs half of the fourth. So that'll bring up red hot Michael Bush. He singled in the second. Bush drives one in the air, deep right center. Back goes Hanniger. It's got a chance. Gone. Long gone. In fact, you can get out the tape measure from Michael Bush. He has now homered in four consecutive games, and the Cubs lead three to nothing. Jorge Polanco. Two outs to J.P. Crawford. Not much of a lead at first. Here's the 1-0. Pitch to Polanco. Swung on high drive right field. That is looking good. Carry, baby. Carry. Goodbye. Home run, Jorge Polanco. First home run in this building as a Mariner. The Mariners are on the board. We got a 3-2 Chicago lead. Deep right center field. That baby carried a long way out of here. It was just going to take one big swing to get the Mariners right back in this game. Now down by one. It was a cutter out over the plate. And Polanco didn't miss it. Luke Raley is the batter. Julio Rodriguez the runner at first. So the tying run is on base for Seattle with two down in the bottom of the ninth. Throw to first. Oh, just diving back in safely, Rodriguez. Man, that was close. They had him at first base. I, they're still looking. Council's looking at this. And the Cubs are going to challenge. Yeah, I thought so. They, Rodriguez was going towards second base. And this tag, I think they got him. I think the game is over. This is going to end the ball game. Boy, that's close. Way too close to be the third out of the ball game when you're the tying run. win a 3-2 victory over the Mariners here in Seattle. Seattle continues their homestand with another game against another team from the National League Central. The Cincinnati Reds are in town. First pitch tonight on Root Sports at 642. Elsewhere yesterday in the American League West to break up the A's. They're playing pretty good. The A's won. They beat the Nationals 7-6. Red Sox over the Angels. And the, I'm sorry, the Astros beat the Rangers. The A's beat the Nationals. The A's aren't supposed to be very good. They're changing a lot of people's mind. As far as the Kraken are concerned, the St. Louis Blues broke open a tie game with three goals in the third period, and they skated away with a 4-1 victory over the Kraken yesterday afternoon. Jared McCann scored for the Kraken. Joey Decord made 25 saves. His record slips to 18, 18, and 11. The Kraken wind up their season with games at Winnipeg tomorrow night, and they wrap up the season at Minnesota on Thursday night. The East Mount Wildcats took control of the Big Nine boys soccer standings. Two things happened Friday night, both good for East Mont. The Wildcats beat the Panthers 3-1, and Sunnyside upset Davis 1-0. That means East Mont has a two-game lead in the standings. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen have the call right here on the NCW Life Channel. There's Snyder. Recovered by Edgar Leon, the long ball. Looking to connect with Aaron Leon into the box. This guy is dangerous. Aaron, 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 right footed shot takes his time. Go, 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 go. With the patience of a neurosurgeon. With the, oh my goodness, that was an impressive strike by Mr. Leon. He took his time, waited, and then delivered. 27 41 on the clock. Eastman still leading 
Wenatchee one goal to nil. There's the throw in. And up open net! An open net! The effort by Mr. Russell's lids slides off his hands and it finds an open net awaiting none other than Aaron Leon. Pefferman. Chani, this could be interesting. Garcia, is he going to have some room? Looks like Sitio. Sitio might have a shot. Oh, and it bounces <laughs> off the upright. It was Benny Mejia. My goodness, what an effort. 59-29. Giovanni Di Landeros waiting for the ball to land for a bit. Limon. Nimble move by Angel Sitio. Edgar Leon. Aaron Leon. Coden opening the game up. Smart move, Valencia. Goal, 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 goal. Jose Valencia for the Eastmont Wildcats. 60 minutes on the dot. Jose Sanchez. Garcia inside the box. Garcia. Goal, 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 goal. Anthony Garcia for the Wenatchee Panthers. We were just talking about it, my wise, and kudos to them for not giving up. And there's the prize. Elsewhere on the pitch over the weekend, Cascades' perfect season. Well, kind of still perfect. They tied Overlake. Obviously, that was a non-league game. Other prep boys soccer over the weekend. Omak got past Orville. Okanagan over to Nascot. And Manson squeaked by Liberty Bell on the pitch. Prep baseball on Friday. Eastmont sweeps a doubleheader from Davis. They took the first game by three runs, but just this, just by one run in the second game. When Anchi split their doubleheader with Eisenhower, they won the opener 4-3. to three. They lost the nightcap 9-8. to eight. Ellensburg sweeps a Freda in boys baseball on Friday. More boys baseball. Chelan sweeps Quincy a nipper in the first game, 3-2, to two, and then a blowout in the second game, 14-4. to four. Cashmere sweeps Cascades 6-3 to three and 16 to nothing. Omak got by Lake Roosevelt in both of their games, 4-1 to one and 9-3. to three. It was a split for Okanagan and Tenasket in boys baseball. Okanagan took the opener. Tenasket took the nightcap. Manson sweeps Orville in a big way, and Brewster took care of business, winning both games of their twin bill against Liberty Bell prep girls softball. It was a split between the cadets and the Panthers. Eisenhower won the first game when Anchi came back to win the second. Moses Lake got by Walla Walla in a single game on Friday, 13 to two. Cashmere scored a combined 30 runs in their doubleheader sweep of Cascade and Lake Roosevelt got by OMAC, 10 nothing. And finally, more girls prep softball from over the weekend. Okanagan sweeps Tenasket, Brewster sweeps Liberty Bell and Waterville Mansfield with two football scores over Soap Lake. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.